We're moving right along in our course on an introduction to engineering vibrations. We're now getting into the exciting part where we're really going to start analyzing uh, vibratory systems. We have all the basics down. And so this is going to be a review of dynamics. I have two courses, two earlier courses on dynamics that will be very helpful for you. The particular one that's uh, very good is uh, systems in motion, two-dimensional motion of bodies and uh, systems of particles. And we're going to derive the what we're going to call the differential equation of motion. I'm going to use that term a lot, I'll abbreviate it DEOM, for simple single degree of freedom systems. And again, I'm going to start abbreviating single degree of freedom with SDOF. Here we are again, and today we are going to focus on, we, we did the actual system in the physical model, and so today we're going to give some input to that system. Uh, the input we're going to give is initial conditions, and we're going to look at free transient vibration. And to come up with the mathematical model, we're going to apply Newton-Euler equations at this time, uh, like I did in my two-dimensional uh, two, two dynamics course, and in my uh, multiple degree of freedom uh, course, multiple degree of freedom vibration systems, I'm going to introduce Lagrange's equations. But in this course, I'm just going to go with Newton-Euler equations to come up with the mathematical model, which is expressed as the differential equation of motion, or DEOM. All right. Um, here is what we did last time. We came up with static equilibrium. We said that the spring force, K delta, in the stretched position, balanced the weight of the mass, uh, mg, when the system was in static equilibrium. So again, here, here's what we're focusing on. We're going to input some initial conditions for free transient vibrations. We're going to apply Newton-Euler equations to come up with a mathematical model. and. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. This is a transient response, single degree of freedom systems, free vibrations, undamped. I haven't, I've taken the damper away in this case, and we're only uh, looking at the spring force, and it's going to be during motion now. It's not in static equilibrium. So here's what we came up with, and now I'm going to assign a generalized coordinate for the motion of this system, and I'm going to use the coordinate Q. We could use Y, uh, you can use whatever you'd like, but I'm going to use Q. And Q is going to be measured from that static equilibrium position downward. So, this, so the motion is going to be about that static equilibrium position. The initial conditions will be given as Q0 equals some initial displacement, and Q.0, Q, the velocity at time 0, the initial velocity is Q.0. So you have an initial displacement and an initial velocity uh, at time 0. So here's my system. There it is in static equilibrium. And we're going to give the system a, a displacement Q, initial displacement, and initial velocity so that the system starts vibrating. Now we're looking at a vibratory system. Okay, so there we go. Uh, again, this models the bungee jumper. It could model a... Uh, Amusement park ride, uh, when we're looking at this system, we can come up with the accelerations beyond the displacement and the velocity. Uh, the human body can sustain about 5 Gs over some definite period of time. Most humans, some, can, some test pilots and stuff can uh, absorb more. But uh, we wouldn't want our amusement park ride to get that high. And so we're going to have to analyze this system. And that's what we're doing now. So transient means the vibration that evolves over time. The goal, again, is to predict or design what's going on. And uh, by the way, we, we have uh, students that go out and, and get jobs in uh, amusement parks uh, like Disney and others uh, designing these kind of rides. Uh, but we're looking at, for this, for this dynamic system, things like position, velocity, and acceleration over time. Uh, to analyze this, I'd like you to go back and review again my 2D uh, dynamics course, Engineering Systems in Motion, Dynamics of Particles and Bodies in 2D Motion. Module 7 and Module 33 will give you a real good review of what we're going to do as we move forward. If it's unfamiliar with you, if you're unfamiliar with it as we move forward, I would encourage you to go back and look at those videos. Okay, so 
what I do is I take a free body diagram, which I've used in st statics, but now I introduce what I call a kinetic diagram. Some folks call it an inertial diagram. It's, it's the inertial forces or the kinetic forces associated with the motion of the system. When we have F equals MA, all the forces go in the free body diagrams. The mass times acceleration, which is sort of a kinetic virtual force, we're going to put on the kinetic diagram. And so at the, uh, we're going to use it in the displaced position. We're going to have pulled our mass down. So I have mg, and then I have now, so I've got mg down for that force, and then I've got that spring force. And it's not just k delta now up. It's also this k delta plus q from the static equilibrium position. On my kinetic diagram, again, I have my mass times acceleration. Since I've chosen q as my generalized coordinate, then q double dot is that acceleration. Once I have the free body diagram equals kinetic diagram, I can sum forces up and down. I've chosen up for assembling my equation, and I get k times delta plus q minus the weight force mg equals minus m q double dot, or minus m times acceleration, mass times acceleration. And so I just rearranged the terms here. And you can see, if you go back to our analysis of static equilibrium, that k delta equals mg. And so we can cancel out k delta minus mg because, once again, throughout motion, that static, uh, that, that static uh, spring force, M, uh, K delta, is always going to balance the weight. So those, that term goes away. And we're just measuring the motion from that static equilibrium position. And so the differential equation becomes MQ double dot plus KQ equals zero. There it is again. Notice it's a second order differential equation. You should have the mathematics to solve a second order differential equation. We've chosen linear uh, masses, springs, and dampers when we add dampers, so it's a linear equation. It has constant coefficients because we said mass and the spring constant are not going to uh, change with time. It's uh, an ordinary differential equation instead of a partial differential equation because it's got lumped characteristics, so it's just a single degree of freedom system. And it's also homogeneous at this point. It's free vibrations. We don't have any forcing function. We also call that autonomous. So homogeneous, no forcing function, free vibration or autonomous mean the same thing. All we have given the system is an initial displacement and an initial velocity, but then we let it go and we, we analyze the system in motion from then on. Later on, we'll add forces to the system and see what that does. And so, um, if we draw the free body diagram equals kinetic diagram in the displaced position from the static equilibrium position, we can always leave out the, the, the mass, excuse me, the spring force in static equilibrium and the weight as long as the spring force balances the weight throughout motion. So as I've written here, uh, we can simplify our FBD as k equals KD by just having KQ up and MQ double dot down. I don't show the mg. I don't show the gate delta because they, they, uh, they are always uh, balanced out. And so we can emit the gravity force or the gravity term when the spring force balances the weight in st static equilibrium and throughout motion. All right, so that wraps it up for today's module. Uh, we reviewed dynamics and we've derived the differential equation, the DEOM, for the simple single degree of freedom system. And we're going to move right along when we get to module 12.